Hi, everybody. Jeff Bunchu here. Nice to see you. Happy April 30th. Better than April 1st. Um, good news. It's a time for another bulletin from Gunlock Bunchu Winery here in Sonoma. And even better news, I'm not doing it alone. I'm doing it with my good friend Keith Emerson here. Um, I've been talking a lot about Keith. I did it in the last bulletin to you. I just did it to a group of people in South Carolina. And uh, so far, he's been a bit of a ghost to everybody but us in the winemaking trailer. Um, but now you get to meet him in person. Uh, so we asked Keith to come over and actually prove that he does exist. So we're going to spend the next few minutes talking about Keith, and then we're going to taste the first wine that he has uh, made for us. Keith wow. started at Cake Bread. Uh, after graduating from college, I believe that's right, Keith, is that, I think so, yep. and managed to find his way over to Sonoma Valley at Gunlock Bunchu uh, and work a number of vintages here where in, I don't know how many vintages that was, five, five uh, vintages. We all knew, we being the family and anyone that he worked with, that he was going to end up doing something great. Sure enough, he went over to Napa Valley very early on, went to work at Vineyard 29 and um, began to uh, make wines for Andy Erickson, Philippe Melka, uh, yeah, Celia Macheski, um, a number of others, uh, and soon became the director of winemaking for Vineyard 29, running the whole show, and then graduated from that into a world of other additional consulting roles, um, as well as creating your own label, Emerson Brown, Emerson Brown. Um, all based on the, his experience of, we talked about it, like a university setting. Uh, where just every vintage there's a number of winemakers that were working uh, working at the facility over there at Vineyard 29. Well, behold, um, Keith said that he'd be interested to come back and work here as our uh, our, our winemaking lead. Um, and, uh, I, of course, I jumped up and down to that chance. So, without further ado, Keith, welcome. Th welcome to, Thank like, you. the uh, Gun Bun TV. Um, <laughs> Gun for, Bun TV. That's it. I like it. So, first... You know, uh, talk about why you, you, you know, you're over there, you know, it's beautiful. We've been there and you guys have had Vineyard 29. The wine is awesome. It's a great spot. Talk about why, um, in addition to your other projects, you want to come back and, uh, and work with us. I've always enjoyed the wines that Linda's made and, uh, you know, thoroughly enjoyed my time working with her. Learned a lot. She's a great mentor, mentor and friend. Um, the property is intriguing and exciting and the family is wonderful. I'm just so excited to be here and actually be able to work with this property block by block. We're sitting here close to block 15 here, 40-year-old uh, Pinot Noir vines. I mean, it doesn't get much more exciting than that for a winemaker. Uh, I'm sitting right next to a younger block of Merlot. We get to work with this. We have a few Malbec vines in here that we're working with as an experiment. Um, it's just a, it's a beautiful setting. It's a beautiful site. We have diversity throughout the vineyard. Um, we're down here sea level up to 50, you know, 50, 100, 150 feet. Then we keep going along the property and we get all the way up to 300 feet where we have some of our Bordeaux varieties. It's just, it's a really exciting place. It's dynamic and I've always loved Ryan Farm Vineyard. And I'm here to help focus on winemaking style, uh, focus on equipment, techniques, um, bring anything that I've learned from my five years over in Napa, um, just bring anything over here that I possibly can to make sure that we are at the cutting edge of super ultra premium winemaking. Man, very well said, Keith. Going for it. Awesome. Um, so you got here, you know, we talked and it was really, uh, I think it was December of last year that we, that you actually set foot on the place. Um, what, and I, I, what's also exciting that you may not know, um, because I don't think, even though you should, you follow my every waking moment that I've moved my office down to the winemaking trailer. So I'm, uh, I'm, I'm there in the middle of it with uh, Ann and Jessica who are there on a day-to-day -day basis working with Keith when he's here and, and giving out um, sort of his directives. Um, but we've been working a lot together the last couple of months. What have, you been, uh, what have we been doing? We've been doing a lot of blending. Um, one thing about coming into this situation is I'm very familiar with the vineyards already. I'm, like I said, I'm familiar with every block on this estate. I know the clones and rootstocks. I know the people that are out there farming, a uh, wonderful farming crew. And so what I didn't have to do, which is unique, is I didn't have to jump in and focus on the vineyard. I had to jump in and focus on the wines. So without further ado, um, maybe you guys have, or I, I have basically shoved this label in your face a lot because I was excited about it, but we didn't have a wine to show off with it. Um, the, it's totally appropriate that the first wine that Keith really stuck a really big fingerprint on 
that's, that you're going to get to taste is our 08 conversion meter. Um, he wasn't here during harvest, so he can't lay claim to what was going on in the vineyard of the vintage, but he certainly had a massive impact on how we finish this wine, what we put in the bottle. So I thought that because it's finally getting to your market after being sold out for some time, we would uh, talk a, bit, a little bit about it. Thank you. This is the 08 Ryan Farm Diversimeter. Just look at that pretty label. Isn't that nice? Okay. So Keith, um, you know, you were over there in Napa making, you know, big, heavy, yummy Cabernets. Uh, what was exciting about coming here with, for, and, and doing this? Talk a little bit about the, your, your, what you think about this program, because obviously you know the Gewürztraminer oh, we absolutely. have for a long time. Yeah, I probably know this, uh, at least block one, better than any block on this estate. Uh, this Gewürztraminer is, is something special. It's, it's amazing. It's, uh, as, as you know, if you know this wine, you absolutely agree that this is a unique wine, uh, unlike any other. You know, I remember back in the day, in 2000, 2001, Navarro was a big, a big, big benchmark of ours. Then there were certain years that we surpassed our benchmark, in our opinion. And uh, you know, it's just, it's, it's definitely, uh, it's one of those wines that is so distinct and has this balance of floral, citrus, spice, and you get just about everything there. You're, you're making sure that your floral is not too powerful, your citrus is not too powerful, your spice is not too powerful, and that everything is harmonious. And I think that we're able to achieve it in this, uh, in this 08. Converts. Awesome. So um, we're talking about the 08 Converts Demeanor here, and a couple things are new this year. One is that we've got a new block of Converts Demeanor that's young but contributed significantly to the older blocks. Yeah. Um, how do you think that worked out? Block 7 is, uh, is definitely uh, a glimpse at the future. What's so nice about Block 1, the old, you know, 40 plus year old Converts Demeanor vines, is that it's just this amazing intensity of floral citrus spice like I've said before and what block seven brings to the table is exciting young citrus and vibrancy it brings life to the wine this older block is so set in its ways that it's it's deep rooted it's um, it's self-regulated you cannot possibly ask for it to have a higher crop level than it does so it's very self-regulated very low yielding this block seven actually brings um, a balanced, uh, uniform look at Gewürztraminer for us, which is something we haven't really had. We've always had this funky, old, 40-year-old Gewürztraminer vine that produces this intense, amazing fruit. Now we have something that's going to bring us some vibrancy and some life, which is, is pretty exciting, actually. You know what's even more exciting about that, and I'm kind of kicking myself based on that nice description, um, but really not. We actually adjusted the price on this wine, so it's now has a suggested retail price of 22. If you work your magic world, you can get it to 19.99, which means that it's probably legitimately, and I'm saying this obviously is biased, so take my take that into account. One of the most authentic, true California classic white wines available from northern Northern California, and to get it at 19.99 means that uh, it's really should be flying. Also remember that it's dry. Like it has less residual sugar than most, than a, let's just say a lot of Chardonnays in your book. I would be willing to wager. Um, it's awesome. Yeah, it's bone, um, dry. bone dry. Listen, so uh, I can just speak personally that it has been awesome having Keith back here, uh, just personally because I'm very fond of him, um, and also it's just awesome to be able to to uh, kind of get on his coattails based on what what kind of what kind of talent he's bringing here because we do need to talk <laughs> about like that you're not actually from california and as much as Go i might, as much as i might <laughs> as much as i might like you to like the 49ers and the giants and tolerate you like in the a's or the raiders uh you're like from a different planet yeah yeah i am a uh, a die hard bostonian um celtic i bleed celtics green i bleed red sox red i bleed you know, New England Patriots, red, white, and blue. It's uh, it's it's in the family. It's in the blood. I can't help it. I'm sorry. <laughs> We're gonna forgive him that little trespass <laughs> and celebrate his winemaking ability, though. Who can? And hate now it? the Bruins are on fire. I mean, who? I mean, me? who can? Who is? Who? Who possibly can begrudge anybody for being a a, a Red Sox fan, except maybe the players before they won the World Series? Anyway, listen. Thank you, Keith. Thanks thank for you. joining the uh, joining the camera. Susan, thanks for holding that thanks. thing steady. Awesome. Cheers. Cheers.